A one, a two, and a one, two, three. We've got two bars of battery, and I don't know if I'm going to do this video. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today's video, I wanted to talk about for those of you who are starting out in the industry, how you can sort of look after yourself a little bit when it comes to sometimes difficult clients or challenging clients because sometimes even we have the best intentions when it comes to creating content and uh, you know giving and trusting the client's word but some of the time you need some of those little things and when I was starting out no one really told me what those were so I just kind of had to had to kind of go around it and sort of work it out as I went. So we're gonna go through a couple of the things I would personally recommend and I personally use when it comes to running a media company and also producing video content and content for clients. Now, I don't use this with every client. It really depends on the situation, really depends on have I worked with that client before, have I had issues with that client before, has invoices been paid late with that client before, have they been slightly more of a challenging client for her perhaps, and etc. You know, and I think there's sometimes a misconception, especially in the creative space or photography space or video space, where there is sometimes a misconception where we can, maybe it's not even necessarily, you know, our fault in Pacific or, or the client's fault in that respect, but some of the time it can feel from the videographer or the video editor or the, or the production company's um, perspective that it can be quite, I don't want to use the term abusive because it's not, but it's kind of like pushing the boundary a little bit on, on what on what is possible, but that is normally down to the business owner not actually setting those expectations first and also not being in a position where they feel confident, confident enough to be able to set those those specific expectations. So hopefully this video is going to help you understand what expectations you should set when it comes to the quoting process and how that quoting process works, but also some of the hurdles and some of the challenges that you will run into and I have run into recently, but also I've run into previously as well. So we're gonna jump into it. And the first one is whether you should have a job contract, job contract or not. Now, I have a job contract and for me, it's one of those things where, yes, you can have a job contract, but sometimes it can bog the project down, right? Now, arguably, there is a risk there. But if you are, if you use some of the other techniques which I'm gonna discuss in this video, then you're minimizing that risk. Now, the only time where I would say this is probably better to have a job contract and have some level of agreement in place, whether the client provides that agreement or you do, that, is when you're dealing with larger projects, especially when there's certain criteria on a budget or, or certain criteria on a brief to be able to hit. You need to be able to have that conversation, being able to have that understanding with that client and also things like copyright, uh, music licensing, what does the invoice actually cover, when is invoice meant to be paid, etc. All of those things can be done in a job contract. Now, personally for me, I've found that it's normally easier to build a good relationship with a client, build a trust relationship with that client and then not worry so much about getting everything in quote unquote writing because to be completely honest in my experience you're going to find it very difficult to take someone to small claims court and it's going to actually end up being probably more expensive for you unless the project is you know 10,000 plus I would say but that's just my opinion right so everything I'm going to say in this video is my opinion so please take it with a pinch of salt however when it's talking about invoices personally and if you're a client watching this this is what I would usually expect when we when we start working together just so you are aware as well normally i ask for a so normally when i get given a brief or i get given an idea or we talk about an idea of what we're going to create for that client we normally talk about what is the deliverables firstly but then also secondly about how much it costs and and, and, and why it costs that much and, and 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 so on you know in that respect and by no means does that mean that it's going to be overly expensive or necessarily really expensive it can be depending on what you're trying to do but that's a topic for another day. So personally, what I ask for is if we're unsure on how many hours the edit is actually gonna take. So for example, my I have an editing hourly rate followed by a hourly rate, hourly rate for shooting if you want less than three hours or a half day for four hours also. And then an eight hour day is 
full day. So these are the breakdowns I'll do, and I have done other videos talking about pricing specifically, and we're not gonna really go around pricing, but if, I'll link that video in the description down below if you are interested. And uh, then I ask for the client to pay me 50% upfront as a security deposit for that date. So I mark the date in my calendar and I pencil it in, and until the deposit is paid, in most cases, that shoot date is not booked in officially until I've received the deposit for that day. So depending on how many hours they've booked, will depend on what the deposit number is right so the amount and that is you know down to you and what your half day full day or hourly rates are and then after that after the shoot day I then expect the other 50% of the shoot day and then after that the edit can then begin so then then on final delivery or the or the product is final delivery it's one of those situations where I expect the invoice within a week or two of final delivery. Now, that's not necessarily on, you know, absolute final delivery, and it really changes, as I say, on the relationship I have with the client. But in some cases, you can put a watermark, and I would recommend you do put a watermark over your work because it's one of the only ways that you are actually going to be able to protect yourself from people. There is clients like this majority aren't majority are lovely and but there is times and there is people and there is chances who are going to chance their luck and try to take your content and utilize it without paying for it right or they maybe were concerned about how much it costs and you know they were not 100 percent sure on they wanted to actually pay that much so they thought they would chance their luck or whatever their reasoning is right but this is something you should tackle at the start before you put the hard work in to create that piece of content and create that valued piece of content in that respect as well but also if you're not going to use a job contract in most cases you should bring up these you know how many revisions do do does someone get for example because the client's not going to know every videographer works differently for example for me in every production you will get two revisions of that video so if you've got three videos you get six revisions that doesn't necessarily mean you can have no revisions on the first two and then six on the last one it's two per video right so if you end up not using those two for the videos then unfortunately you do lose those revisions but you know as long as you're happy with the content and you're happy with the video then we're all winning but for me I think it's one of those things where you need to as I say set those boundaries and set those expectations first because if you don't you could run into a problem where there's a miscommunication or you could understand or, or you know etc and if and if there is mistakes happen on shoots then have that conversation with that client and see what they would like to do as well you know for me I do my best to always make sure that a client is happy and always make sure that they never leave me unhappy or etc in that respect if they are going to work with me because that's how you keep long-term clients and that's how you keep your reputation um, you know good now don't get me wrong there's sometimes some 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 situations don't work out and that's fine but it's then about how do you cleanly or respectfully withdraw from those situations and do and you gain it from experience it's not going to be something you're just going to have instantly it's going to be something you'll gain from experience so my main tips in this video that i wanted to talk about was as i say ask for 50 percent up front now sometimes this can be budgetarily difficult to do if especially if you're doing with larger projects and larger things where you're dealing with you know larger corporations so you have invoice paid like where they have to send it to a finance department and then that finance department normally takes 30 days to actually pay out now it's difficult there but that's up to you whether you're willing to take that risk but personally what I would do was I would say okay well this is the project cost and we're gonna film it and then I'm not gonna charge you a deposit because you have to go through that 30-day window but whilst the edit is going to be taking place I expect the you know the portion of the filming to actually then be paid for within that 30 days so I should get a confirmation from their finance department that they've received the, the, the filming invoice and if they haven't I'll chase them up on that and then I will look forward to receiving that payment before the edit to begin this is just a way now this the only time where this isn't true is if it's a video that is really 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 event based and is really really required to go out quickly however again you're taking that risk you're taking that different risk that only you know whether you are willing to take that risk or not now if you've worked with that client a lot and you know they do pay their invoices and they and they are paying their bills and they do pay their bills on time etc then go for it 
right? If you feel comfortable doing that. But if you don't feel comfortable doing that, then explain your concerns to your client. And normally, in most cases I've found, your client is normally more, more likely or, or happy to see what they can do for you because they do understand, especially in times like now, that it may be challenging for them or for you to go into a working relationship without some form of guarantee. So that might be they send you a purchase order, which is basically a, a you know, we are going to order this product for this much from you. Um, or some, some clients like to pay me up front, for example, as well. That's great because it means we don't really need to worry about money as much because I know it's already there. And the thing is that I would recommend like that if you are going to get paid up front and you do take deposits, that money isn't yours until you've technically earned it. So all you're doing is securing it in your bank account to secure that they're serious and they want to move forward. So this is something to keep in mind. This is not money that you can necessarily spend because worst case scenario, you might have to give it back. So this is something to keep in mind, but you know, sometimes you have to do that bit of balancing out, especially when you've got bills to pay yourself, whether that's business or personal. But these are just a couple of things to think about. And if you're gonna put watermarks over stuff, you need to let the client know about that process and need to, you know, specifically let them know that until X has happened, there will be a watermark over the video or over the images because it's firstly going to protect you and they will understand why you're doing it because they, they understand that you're a business and you need to protect yourself as a business. However, it will be quite, sometimes quite a shock if they are in a position where they were expecting just to get an un, unwatermarked image or an unwatermarked video specifically. So this is where that communication comes in and this is what I would normally communicate at the beginning of a certain, certain, you know, project quote or project you know, development meeting, all that kind of thing. When we do pre-production, all of this information is kind of talked about. And if it isn't, reinforce it on the shoot. And if it isn't, again, reinforce it after the filming day, just so the client is made aware. And try to always have stuff in writing. So then if the client does come back to you and say, well, actually, why is things not being done this way, blah, 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 blah. Then you can say, well, I emailed you on such and such saying uh, and explaining what I needed. And also you need to let them know if, if you need something from them. So say, for example, the video is done but you're waiting on their logo or you're waiting on an image or you're waiting on an asset from them they need to understand it's part of your job to help them understand that they are currently holding up their own video from being released because you're waiting on an asset or etc or even if you're outsourcing the editing or you're not doing the editing yourself and you have a lot on explain to them be a human to them and explain why it may take longer and why you are want to do that so a example could be you want to ensure that the product is going to be really really good and you want to ensure that the quality is going to be there and you can't guarantee that unless you spend a week two weeks, three weeks, whatever it may be, to be able to get that edit done in time. And also you need, but you also need to understand that if the client needs it by a specific date, so I always ask my client, when is when is the ideal delivery date here? And, and the key word there is ideal, right? Because there's ideal and then there's absolutely have to. So these are two dates. We'll aim for ideal, but if there's revisions or there's changes or there's anything that will hit the other date, that's why you have a buffer. So these are just some of the things I would think about if I was starting out again this year. And the same is true of photography. It's identical, but just replace the word video whenever I said it in the previous part of the video. Um, and then, you know, just replace that with images. So you can put your own watermarks over, over images as well. And if you don't know how to do that, do let me know. Uh, my DMs are always open for anyone who uh, would like some advice from me personally. So reach out to my Instagram, linked in the description down below. If you did enjoy this video, I'd love to hear what you think in the comment section down below. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming back. If you did enjoy this video, I'd love to hear what you think in the comment section down below, as I said before. And thank you so much for subscribing. If you are new and you did enjoy this piece of content, and would like to see more like it. And I'll see you very, very soon. And also, just before I do go, if you were interested in any of the gear that I have used in this video, then make sure to check the description down below because you can support the channel in a different way if you do choose to uh, use those Amazon affiliate links down below. But thank you so much for watching once again. I'll see you very, very soon with a brand new piece of content. And uh, have a good day, week, evening, whenever you're watching this. Have a good period of time between now and when we see each other again. I'll see you soon.